Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Barrett, six minutes. Go ahead. Sir, how much money does Bell Media or CTV News receive in annual subsidies from uh, Justin Trudeau's Liberal government? Unlike the CBC, CTV nor CTV News receive any subsidies from the government. In fact, we're required to spend at least 30% of our annual revenue each year, which amounts to $1.2 billion since 2011 on Canadian programming expenditures. At the same time as all of this, we are losing $185 million a year on our television operations, including a loss of $40 million on news alone. So CTV hasn't received um, any regulatory relief or no wage relief uh, in the last nine years. Is that your, your contention? We receive no subsidies from the government. The question was regulatory relief or subsidies for uh, wages in the last nine years. So um, there was uh, a decision made by the federal government recently uh, that amounted to having a $40 million impact on Bell Media, but it was not a subsidy. It was, in fact, the elimination of a tax on our revenues that had existed since 1997. $40 million dollars in, in regulatory relief. I will uh, skip ahead of you. Uh, and $122 million in subsidies for wages. So I want to talk about... Million. Pardon me? The $40 million dollars was not a subsidy. Sir, you're, you're correcting something that I didn't say. So let's just, let's just get off on the right foot here. I refer to it as regulatory relief. $40 million dollars in regulatory relief. Did you receive $40 million dollars in regulatory relief? We received $40 million dollars in re relief through the elimination of a tax. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I have a sense of how this is going to go, so let's, let's, let's go. We've seen a lot of examples of CTV act activism masquerading as journalism. And I want to give you a couple examples of that. On May 29th of this year, uh, you published a story that was titled, Polly of Pan for Video Saying Canadians Fleeing for Nicaragua. Now, of course, this story was about uh, the leader of the opposition um, talking to Canadians who are suffering after nine years of a government whose, uh, whose economic vandalism has made it um, all but impossible for uh, millions of Canadians to survive here. But on April the 2nd, just days later, when RBC releases a report on housing trends and affordability, toughest time ever to afford a home as soaring interest cop costs keep raising the bar, again, detailing the results of nine years of, uh, of life under the NDP Liberals, we don't see that, uh, we don't see a story. I don't have a story to offer you from CTV on that, which, it, which speaks to the experience that uh, Mr. Polyev had related about those Canadians. And then, of course, we have the most recent example of the blatant disinformation spread by your network. This, uh, this disinformation that was perpetrated on Canadians was spread um, on your, across, your, across your platforms where instead of uh, the message that Mr. Polyev had given, which is what we hear from millions of Canadians, and that's the need for a carbon tax selection when Canadians can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves, um, you altered it. To, you, you altered that quote from Mr. Polyev into one that reflected talking points from Justin Trudeau's Prime Minister's office. So we wouldn't know about that most recent case if you weren't called out by a conservative staffer. And you said you're sorry, but we know that you're sorry that you got, that you're only sorry that you got caught. Isn't that right? I disagree with your characterization. So are you sorry? We have apologized twice for a mistake that occurred. Um, we have... Um, Back and Donny. reviewed all of your coverage of Mr. Polyev and his discussions about the uh, the uh, Trudeau Liberals' carbon tax on everything that they plan to, uh, of course, uh, quadruple raising the price of gas to 60 cents a litre. Um, that's seen uh, one in four Canadians not uh, not know where their next meal is coming from. Food bank use skyrocket to to records never. Uh, seen before in this country. Have you gone back and reviewed all of your coverage of Mr. Polyev, or will it be incumbent on Conservatives to have to go through 
and review historically the disinformation that CTV has perpetrated on Canadians? Or, uh, or is that something that CTV is going to pro proactively do? Because I can assure you, sir, that going forward, we know that we now need to do this not just uh, for ourselves, but for Canadians, because um, certainly the trust has been broken. I want to give Mr. Grayson a chance to answer that, uh, Mr. Baird. Go so, ahead. So, thank you. I, I disagree with the left. characterization yeah. that we are engaged in a campaign of disinformation uh, with respect to Canadians. It's our job to present all sides of public policy issues in a balanced, accurate, and fair way so Canadians can make informed decisions on them. That's what we do consistently on a daily basis. This particular issue that happened on September the 22nd Sir, was so the a very rare and unique occurrence. Well, I, I'd be interested to know how you, how you, ver I, it was, I would be interested to know how you verified that it was rare if you didn't go back and review all of the other instances of coverage, like I said. I'd like you to tell us now, though, do you think it's appropriate for other media organizations that have criticized that Conservatives called out this disinformation when you yourself admitted that you were wrong? The question is, do you think it is appropriate for other media outlets to have criticized this disinformation haven't been called out. Quick response, please, Mr. Gray. It's it's not for me to uh, to suggest how other media outlets operate. My job is to manage CTV News. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bear. Mr. Chair, Mr. Gray, you have repeatedly stated here today that you believe that there was no intent to mislead. Let's look at what happened. CTV spliced together three short sound bites. Sound bites spliced together, not even in the order that they were stated, to create an entirely made up sentence, literally fake news, that entirely changed the meaning of what Pierre Polyev said. So, on what basis do you conclude that there was no intent to mislead? On what basis exactly? Two now former staff members of CTV News acted in a way that was in breach of our editorial standards. You made a conclusive statement that there was no intent to mislead, so I'm asking you on what basis do you draw that conclusion? Based on 33 years of experience, and this being the Mr. first Gray, and only Mr. Gray, time no one believes like you. And you happened. said, you said, for example, that uh, that the employee who altered the, the video, one of the two employees, said that uh, he or she believed uh, that uh, it would be understood to be about the carbon tax election. Yet nowhere in the report is there any mention of a carbon tax election. So on what basis could anyone reasonably believe that that statement was made in that context when there was no context? Quite the opposite, disinformation. I disagree. Disagree. It's a fact that there was no mention of a carbon tax election. You have no credibility, and in the face of the fact that CTV peddled a fraudulent news story, and you haven't apologized. You haven't explained the basis upon which you have asserted that there was no intent to mislead. To simply say you disagree isn't good enough. No one believes you. We have, Mr. in fact, apologized twice. You haven't apologized at all. You said there was no intent to mislead. No intent to mislead, but you can't even articulate the basis of why. There was no intent to mislead. We have apologized Say that, twice. But, but I asked you to provide a basis, and you haven't been able to provide a basis. 2.30. Go ahead. Mr. Caputo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, Mr. Gray, I take issue with uh, something that you said, and it's actually been said a number of times at this committee. You characterize this as a mistake. Do you stand by that? It was a... a the, via, the violation Sir, of I asked our you, editorial standards. Was this standards. a mistake? You've said that before. You stand by the fact it was a mistake. Is that correct? I, I stand by the fact that um, Sir, this, this story went to air in a way that it shouldn't Sir, have. No, you have called it a mistake. And with all due respect, a mistake is when I put milk in my coffee instead of cream. This was a massive error in judgment. This was a previously 
unforeseen breach of trust from what was once a trusted media organization. And you have said, picking up on what Mr. Cooper said, the explanation given was not to mislead Canadians. Sir, do you even believe that? I stand by my testimony today wholeheartedly and unreservedly. You stand by your testimony that the intent was not to mislead Canadians. Did you talk to these people and get their motive, sir? There was a fulsome investigation. But I asked, I asked whether, sir, sir, with all due respect, I didn't ask whether there was an investigation. I asked whether you spoke with them, yes or no. I did not speak with them beyond having an initial conversation with the reporter the okay. night that this was brought so, to our attention. So you had a brief initial conversation, and based on that, you come to committee and say that, that there was no malevolent intent to mislead based on that. And I ask whether you believe that, and you stand by it. With all due respect, sir, that is an untenable claim that you have arrived at. We are getting ready here for a carbon tax election. At the end of the day, is there one thing that you have done, that you have implemented to ensure that this won't happen again? Just one thing. Yes, we've terminated two individuals. No, no. <laughs> Sir, you have countless other employees. I mean, that, that was possibly the worst answer you could have given. What about moving forward? That is retrospective. What about moving forward? Because, sir, this is what I can say. Why is it that it always is the Conservatives that are fighting this, this battle? Why is it? Why is it that when it comes to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, they are not misquoted, but when it comes to Conservatives and Pierre Polyev, this type of thing can happen, and that is shameful. I'm going to have Thank to you. end it there. I, Mr. I disagree Gray? with the characterization. Okay. Thank you.